We are about to do something that we have never done before. No, nope. sure not. We are going to boondock. Yes. But it's, it's practice. Yeah, we're doing a dry run. And we're doing it in the safety of a campground. <laughs> yeah. Because we figured that we wanted to test out this new system mm -hmm. that we got powered by Big Beard batteries. And we didn't want to just do it in the wild and mm -hmm. just, you know, because that's very risky. Because if we fall flat on our faces, we got no, no. resources. <laughs> yeah. So we're doing it at a campground. So what yeah. we're going to do today is for the next three days, what we're going to do is we are going to simulate. Yes. What we're going to do is we're going to pretend like we're rolling into a dry camping spot yeah. today. And for the next three nights, mm -hmm. we're completely off of hookups. Yeah. In my mind, we're in the Badlands. Okay. <laughs> we can be wherever you want to be. All right. While we're still on full hookups, I'm going to go and empty the black and the gray tanks. I'll do a black tank flush. And then I'm going to fill up the fresh tank. And once we go into boondocking mode, uh, we will disconnect from the water and turn on the water pump. Um, if we were actually traveling today, what we would do is we would try to use as few electronical devices as possible while we're traveling. Probably only have the refrigerator running. Well, here's Leslie's priority. Clean as much stuff as possible before we don't have all the water. I like your tone. <laughs> So she's been vacuuming, she's been cleaning, she's doing laundry right now, trying to do all the things that we do on full hookups that would take more to do. And I would do, do this before we go boondocking too. I'd make sure everything is perfectly clean but the next few days, so. I'm getting the generator ready. We have the Champion Dual Fuel 3400. It runs on gas or propane. We run ours on propane and we keep it in the back of the truck, stored right up here. I just pulled it out to the end of the tailgate. All right, while I'm waiting for the tanks to flush, I'm going to go ahead and test this generator, make sure we're good to go. So we'll just leave this in the back of the truck, just right there on the edge, close that tailgate, and then let's go over here and finish doing our dump and flush. Now we're gonna fill the freshwater tank. We know we have a 93 gallon freshwater tank. So the way that we are gonna fill this, we're not gonna use the sensors in the inside. I have a water flow meter on here. I actually have a water flow meter for the black tank flush and for the fresh water. This is just to know how much to flush the black tank with. But these things are really cheap on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description so you can get these. But what I did was I zeroed this one out. So now it's on zero. So now when I switch this over to the power fill tank, it'll tell me exactly how much water is going into my fresh water tank. I don't even have to look at the sensors. So let's go to white down, green to the left, red up, and then blue down is power fill. Well, we're probably going a little overboard on how much water, fresh water we're putting on board. And I just don't want to run out and that's our first time. And you know, it's not like gray water. You can dump the fresh water tank wherever. So a lot of these, uh, I've heard anyway, a lot of these harvest hosts have places, you know, where you can fill your water. And so you're not carrying it on a bunch of weight on travel day. You can fill up when you get there and just, just fill up your, your fresh water tank. And then whatever you don't use, just dump it on the ground before you leave. It's no big deal. And let's go inside and make sure Leslie's all good to go before we disconnect all this stuff because I don't want to disconnect and she go, well, I needed to still do one thing. So let's go and make sure she's ready and get this boondocking party started. Are you ready to be boondocking? Sure. Yeah, <laughs> yes. The answer is yes. Yeah, so um, I just got to cut off the water and make sure you are done with everything. Yes. And everything. So we, have, we had a couple more things to prep. So we got, we got all the plastic wear. Yes. And you could probably see that we had the Berkey we out. Got the Berkey back out for Boondog. It's a good thing we held on to it. Yeah. We didn't just disregard it when we got the blue tech because now it's going to be needed for boondocking. Yeah, normally we use the R3, the blue tech R3. And but even if we ran that through the filter and into the fresh tank, I just I don't know. Just yeah. something about drinking water out of the fresh tank's not I know you have issues with that. Yeah, so we just figured, hey, we'll fill up the pitcher, which the pitcher is in there, and we'll just fill up the Berkey. So we're good. We can unhook. Yes. From the power of the water. Yes, sir. All right. Before we do that, though, I just uh -huh. want to go over, like, when we unhook, what all is still going to be running, okay? We do have a little thermometer clock up here. We have Scout's heat lamp and UV lamps that have to run. 
to provide him heat. Mm -hmm. We are going to be watching TV, obviously. Yes. Um, we could probably turn off the those frame. Be, yeah, those the will be off during. Echo show. Yeah. Yeah. When we boondock, we won't have those on. And then, you know, well, it's probably not optimal for boondocking, but today we are doing some chicken soup. Yes. It's the last crock pot meal we had scheduled to do. So we unhook. We'll still that will still be running for a couple of hours anyway. Yeah. Uh, I turned off all the power to all my stuff over here. Which if I do have to do any editing, I will turn the power back on. the The computer has power, but my extra monitor requires requires power. Uh, we'll run coffee in the morning. Yeah. We will fridge. run some lights. We'll be running. the fridge is going to be running all the time. Mm -hmm. um, we probably won't do any running of the air fryer or the microwave. No. We'll be doing meals in on the stove top. Stove top meals from now on. Or oven. Anything mm -hmm. that uses propane. Yes. We'll be using. This is what we got going on right now. We have a hundred percent battery and not using too much because it's not warm enough to have to use any air conditioners. We will not be using our typical heating elements. No. Which normally we use the fireplace and the space and the little space heater. Cool. Or a combination of one or the other, depending on how cold how it cold is in here. Is. Yeah. But because we're boondocking and anything that creates heat takes a lot of power. Yes. We will only be running furnace. All right, let's kick this bad boy over to dry camping. There we go. Like that. And then turn the water pump on. Primed. We're doing it. We're not hooked up to anything. Five minutes in, I'm still alive. Yay! It's cold though. We're doing it. <laughs> we're so doing it. I don't know how long we're doing it for, but we're doing it. I think we can make it to three days. I think we're good, man. Yes. And in case you didn't catch the video where we showed the install of our system, uh, we have three of the 280 amp hour big beard batteries, which is 840 amp hours total. And then we have four of the 335 watt solar panels on the roof. So we have 1,340 watts of solar coming in from, from top side. All right. So right now mm -hmm. our load is 281. That's how much we're using. Okay. And then we are pulling in 302 with the solar. So we're pulling in more than we're using right now. So okay. our batteries, as, as long as, yeah, they'll stay topped off as long as we're not using more stuff. Another thing that's a concern is water. Yeah. Because we're going to be taking showers, mm -hmm. which you need to remember to turn off. Hit the little stop button, you know. Yeah. Rinse. Stop button. Freeze my butt off. Lather. Water. Rinse button off. Freeze my butt off. And then get get out. Yeah. Leslie's a water hoard. <laughs> You're a water snob and I'm a water hoard. <laughs> I didn't say whore, I said a hoard. Oh. <laughs> God. <laughs> I heard whore. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. How did you sleep? Slept good. Yeah? Woke up too early and went back to sleep. Okay. And now not so good. <laughs> Check the old power consumption. Leslie's making coffee right now, so obviously that's going to be a little higher right now. Just starting to get a little sun on the solar. We're at 48% battery. Last night, I guess the biggest power draw is probably the refrigerator overnight. Yeah. That takes the most power. And then we use the air fryer for like, six what, minutes. five, six minutes to brown some rolls. Yeah. With our chicken soup. Mm -hmm. Now for several hours after we cut the power yesterday though, we did still have the crock pot on making the chicken soup. Yeah, for for about two more hours that was on. And we just made our coffee. And after yeah. all that and all night, 48% is not terrible. I don't think it's terrible. I don't know. We used a lot of propane. Yeah. That's concerning. Yeah. Because if you're going to do like several nights boondocking i mean in colder temps we got to keep it warm in here for scout overnight yeah we got to keep it close to 70 if we can we didn't even keep it close to 70 last no. night it was like 65 
was the best we did and we used 40 percent of one tank of our propane keeping it at 65. yeah so that is uh, that's a big concern yeah propane usage because we don't have to worry about it when eight o'clock in the morning comes and his lights oh, turn on but then his lights draw more power yeah because he, he'll heat up really quickly when his heat lamps come on. Uh -huh. It's very concentrated heat on one spot. And so he's fine. Yeah, once it's on. 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. But overnight, to, to keep him at the temperature we need to keep him at, we're cranking on some on some propane, man. Well, we're about 24 hours in. Mm -hmm. How you feeling? Good. Yeah, we're not doing too bad. No. Let me show you what's going on over here. When we woke up, we had 48% power, and now we have 55. We haven't done anything other than just let the solar do its thing. You can see that we have, we're using 270-ish watts and bringing in a little over 600. Now we have 1,340 watts on the roof, but you don't get complete coverage because the sun is like moving at back and angle. forth at angles and stuff, so you don't get yeah. the full thing. So we've only gained 7%. Yeah. In not in, in a long time, so yeah. it's not charging really fast, but no. we'll let that go for most of the day. Get as much solar power as we can before we charge up, so we don't use as much propane on the generator charging up. Yes, now we were talking about Scout's solution because Scout sleeps up here at night mm -hmm. and it's a little colder up there for him than we would like it to be. Yeah, because even with the heater furnace running at night, it gets way warmer in the bedroom than it does out here in the living room. Yeah. So what's the solution? The solution is going to be a nano light. Okay. Same nano light he has in his car carrier, but with a ceramic heater bulb instead of a basking bulb. Yeah, it doesn't put off any light, so it doesn't disrupt his sleep. No. It just puts off heat. It puts off, yeah, it's only 40 watts, and so is the, the actual cylinder for it. So. Not taking too much power. No. I'm, I'm curious if this will be the best solution which I think it is for supplementing a little bit of heat for him at night. Because normally on hookups, we either run the fireplace the whole night or we run the space heater all night when it's cold. Yeah, which we can't do. That would just so, suck up all of our power. Yeah. So more testing, more boondocking stuff for us than there would be for your typical we, Yeah, we have RVers, different because, considerations yeah. at the moment. Yeah. So when you travel with a reptile, that's all things you got to take into consideration. So once we get Scout's new setup done, we will show you what it looks like, and then we'll test it tonight. Yeah. And see if it keeps them warm enough. Well, we reached our peak, and what I mean by that is we've reached the point to where we are now using more than the solar's bringing in. Even though the sun's not all the way down, we've lost enough sun to where we are now losing, so we might as well hook up the generator. That actually happened about an hour ago, but we weren't here. And the reason that we weren't here was because when we got back from getting Scout's light bulb, I noticed that one of the tire pressures on the truck was a little low. So I went and looked at the tire. We had a piece of metal in the tire. And so we ran back to town before we didn't want to wake up to a flat tire. It still was holding a little bit of air. So we ran back to town with the discount tire and they fixed it up for us. And actually they didn't charge us anything. And they handed us a receipt that said zero. And I'm like, I don't owe you anything. And they're like, nope, just pay it forward, man. And I was like, cool, done deal. I'm going to do it. So we did lose a little bit more when we left, where we peaked, we were about 57% of total battery, uh, which so we gained about nine through the day, 9%. And uh, now we're back down to 54%. So I was able to tell all that while we were gone because I can see it in my app, even though we're not here, I can see on my phone what's going on real time with that system. So that let me know that we peaked at about four o'clock. It's about five o'clock now. So I'm going to set up the generator and get it going. And Leslie's going to cook dinner while the batteries are recharging. And then uh, she's got to use the air fryer. So when she gets done using the air fryer, then we'll turn the air fryer off. Hopefully we'll get enough charge out of the battery to where we can just disconnect um, in here in a couple hours. And even if we don't get fully charged, we know that we used 52% of our battery bank yesterday and we have 54% right now. So technically we don't even need to use the generator, but we're going to anyway, just to make sure that we have enough to get through the night because for some crazy reason, if we you know use more power today than we did yesterday, we don't want to drain it completely. So I'm gonna get this hooked up. All right, we're charging. You can see the shore, that's the generator, 1830 coming in. We're only using 416, 420, 430. And uh, hopefully that 54% will get uh, increased. Leslie is over here cooking. Yeah. What you cooking? Chili. Yeah. 
good for a chilly day. Yeah. It's supposed to get cold again tonight, so that'll be good. And then we didn't get any of this stuff done with Scout's lights and stuff, but we'll do that after dinner. Yeah, after dinner we'll get that <laughs> set up and then we'll show you what that's what that's gonna look like. Alright, so here's what we got. Everything looks pretty much the same. That's his normal heat lamp right there, and there's his UV bar, and he's up in there. But this is what we were talking about. This is the new the new heat bulb that's not really a bulb it's a ceramic bulb it doesn't put off light it only puts off the heat so hopefully this will radiate heat throughout here after his heat lamp goes off we have it set for his lights go off at 8 p.m this will come on at 10 p.m and then this will go off what time did you set this for seven this will go off at 7 a.m and then this one will come on at 8 a.m so he almost has continuous heat. He has a couple little underlap because you don't want to overheat him. No, he doesn't require a lot of heat. Yeah, but he's thrilled about boondocking. Look how happy he is. <laughs> so happy. So happy to be boondocking. Uh, he's like, why do you hate me? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Hopefully it'll be a little warmer tonight. Yeah. Well, it's been about an hour and we're up to 64%, which is a 10% increase. And let me show you this because what I didn't do is I didn't adjust the uh, AC current limit on the system and when we turned on the air fryer the generator started wah, like screaming and I was like oh man that's that can't be good I can't talk over by the generator I tried but anyway there's a little red light that lights up when it's overloading and I went outside and it was it was on and it was hot and you could like the exhaust was like as I was walking up you could you could feel the exhaust so it was it was working way too hard but it didn't do that for very long luckily I caught it really quick shut it off and then I was like oh I need to call Todd so I, I talked to Todd and Todd's like oh did you adjust your AC current limit and I said no I did not but he did teach me that I just didn't retain it and that's why we do practice well welcome to the third and final day of the wayward wags Boondocking practice. Yeah. How do you think we're doing? Good. I think we're doing pretty good too. We had the little we had a little snafu last night with overloading the generator. Well, you panicked. I did. <laughs> I didn't get that on camera because I panicked and I went outside real fast and unplugged the the uh, thing from the generator so it wouldn't overload anymore. We ran the generator last night for about three hours. To recharge. To recharge. We got up to 70%. Uh, I think Scout did pretty good last night. Yeah. I shot the little temperature thing in there. Before we went to bed. Before we went to yeah. bed. And it was about 75 in there. So he's on, good. On the hot, hot side. <clears throat> on the hot side. Where it's hanging. It was in the 80s on the war where the ceramic thing was hanging. Yeah. But where he was laying, comfortable 75 degrees. We're boondockers. It is official. No, it's not official yet. Stamp it. It's official. Well... We got through practice. <laughs> now we actually have to go out and do some real boondocking with no hookups, no safety net, no safety net. and all that stuff. Yeah. So, full disclosure, this system that we have, we were going to get a bigger system. Yes, initially. We initially, were. we were going to get a bigger system with another battery and another leg, and so we could run more stuff, run for longer, and all that. Yeah. And I was like, and I started looking at it as we were getting closer to getting there. And I was like, eh, I don't know. And we just didn't know if we wanted to spend the money, honestly, because we had just spent time with Lauren. She just had a baby. We spent a lot of money on Lauren. So I was like, let's hold off for now. Even though we, we technically we had the money. But I was like, ah, let's hold off just in case. So we told Todd, let's just go with the basic pack. Yeah. And, and then the Friday, when they were wrapping everything up. Yeah, while they were taking their final quiz or test yeah because right before that Todd was telling me all the cool stuff that you could do with the system had we got it yeah. fully and you had seen what they put in already yeah you were it already really getting cool. excited so I was like oh man I think I messed up I think we should have went with the original I think we should have just Stuck got it to all the original plan but it was too late by then it was already too late mm -hmm. but I was like okay but by then I kind of already decided I think I think we're gonna upgrade yeah but let's go try it in the field just to be sure which is what we just did and yeah, I think we need more. Yeah. And, and not, I don't think we need more. Need I use need very loosely, loosely but yeah. I, we want more. Yeah. <clears throat> we want to be able to run more for longer. We did three days and we had, we didn't even have to charge 
the batteries. We didn't have to. Twice, I don't think. We we yeah. char I think we would have had to only charge it once. Yeah. And maybe not even for the full amount of time. Had we had the upgraded system. We were nervous though. We might not have even had to recharge at all. Oh. We might have been able to do three days without even using the generator, which yes. would be awesome. Yeah. Or if we accidentally kick on the microwave while an air conditioner's on or whatever. Accidents are going to happen. We would have another leg. Yeah. As a safety net and as a backup. Yeah. So we're headed over to the school now to do our Alliance Fundamentals, Fundamentals course. And when we arrive today, they're going to go ahead and, and install the extra battery. Yes. The extra MultiPlus. Mm -hmm. And all the wiring and all the lickies and chewies that it takes to make that system work properly. So yeah. we are, we're, we're going back to the original plan. Big shocker. Big shocker. I said we should have stuck with it to begin with. I know what you said. You were trying. <laughs> she keeps reminding me. She keeps saying, I told you so. Could have already had it. And she was right. And it's going to cost us a little bit more now because, well, the schoolhouse was helping us with labor. Well, now they're not in solar class anymore. So we got to pay so somebody pay to the do labor. it. Yeah. So, but it's okay. It's okay. Lesson learned. Always go with your gut the first time. Always trust your wife. Always. I wasn't going to say that, but yeah, always trust your wife. Anyway, we're boondockers, but we got to wrap this up because we are headed to the school to go learn how to work on RVs. Yes. And they're going to start the, the solar upgrade as soon as we park it. So we got to get there. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. Hey, stick around for a few seconds. We're going to honor a fallen hero. If you want to get involved with helping us help veterans, everything you need to know is right down in the description of the video. Appreciate you watching and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.